how to do the moss stitch. And we will be creating a little washcloth out of this stitch. What you need is a size four millimeter hook. You need some scissors, some cotton yarn, and a yarn needle for weaving in all your ends. Once you have all of these materials, let's head over to the table and get started. See you soon. The moss stitch is going to be a pretty easy stitch to work with because it is made entirely of single crochets and a chain one in between each stitch. And you will just be working in between those chain one spaces. So there will be no counting and it will be pretty easy to keep track of the amount of rows and the amount of stitches that you do for each row. So let's go ahead and get started. So I will be working into the back loops of the chain to give my dishcloth a nicer edge throughout this pattern. And to start the moss stitch, we are going to skip this first chain, skip the next chain, and skip the third chain. So we are going to work a single crochet into that fourth chain from the hook. And that will count as our first moss stitch. So now that you've got your single crochet, we are going to chain one. And that will act as a spacer between each of our single crochets. We want to skip the next stitch and work our next single crochet into that second back loop. And that's all there is to it. So chain one again. Skip that next stitch and work a single crochet into the back loop of that second chain. Now meet your back at the end of the row. At the end of your row, you should have two more stitches. So you've just completed your second to last single crochet. We're gonna yarn over, chain one, and finish this row off with our last single crochet in that last back loop. And that is what row one looks like. Our second row is going to begin by chaining two. And that chain two will act as a spacer at the end of our row. Or more likely the beginning of our row. So we're gonna turn and work our first single crochet into the space that you created with the chain one from the previous row. And all you're doing is single crocheting into the space. You're not working into the chain. Chain one. Skip that single crochet and work into the next space. Single crochet. And chain one. So if you are having trouble finding that space in between each stitch because you might crochet a little tightly, just take these two single crochets and spread them apart a little bit and there is that space. We are going to continue working this same pattern all the way until the end of our row. Now we'll meet you back at the end of our row. We are going to finish off row two by chaining one and work a single crochet right into that chain two space that you left at the very beginning of row one. And you're gonna finish it off with a single crochet. Like I said before, if you have trouble finding that space, 
just drag your chain and that single crochet and pull it apart a little bit. Just remember that every row starts with a chain 2. You are turning. And you are just working into that space that you created for your chains. So when your this cloth measures around five and a half inches, I'll be back to show you how to finish it off. So you are going to repeat row two until you have about 30 rows or 28 or any amount in between those rows. And that just counts the bottom of your foundation chain that you did and it counts the top of the foundation chain at the top. And an easy way to count the number of rows that you have done already is by looking at the little posts. And you can tell that they go vertically and they look like the little bees right here. So as long as you count these little bees, you should be good to go on how to keep track of your rows. Your last row is going to be just like all the previous rows that you have done, except for one thing. You're going to chain one, work into that last space that you created in your previous row. Do one more single crochet. Grab your scissors and snip off your tail. You just want to pull through and tighten it just like that. That is the end of your disc cloth. Now when we are weaving in our tails, we are just going to weave it in the first or the last row that we did. And we are just going to take our yarn needle that we have already threaded, slip it through that first stitch, and then just go underneath a few more. There's two. And there we go. And you want to thread through at least three times. And that will make sure that your tail is here. And if you still have a little bit left, you can just take your scissors and snip off the rest. For that, just make sure that your tail doesn't come out when you are using the disc cloth. And there we go. There's the third one. You can still have access. You snip it off. You want to bend your first this clock. So I hope you guys have enjoyed learning how to create the mustard this clock. And this is just a really fast, easy, and simple way to make a bunch of this clocks in one sitting. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And I will see you all next week. Bye!